The commercial space industry is heating up, but right now outer space is about as lawless as the Wild West. The question is not just who owns space, but whether anyone actually can. The closest thing we have to a law governing space is the Outer Space Treaty, an agreement first drawn up by the United Nations in 1967 and ratified now by 102 countries. The treaty was written during the heat of the space race. It sought to prevent territorial disputes by making it illegal for any nation to claim ownership over outer space or any celestial body. But the treaty makes no mention of private companies, and the issue could come to a head now that several firms are planning ventures in space. For example, the American company Planetary Resources aims to mine asteroids for precious metals and water for rocket fuel. But it's not clear the firm can claim to own any part of an asteroid, including the resources they mine. Of course, this hasn't stopped some people from staking claims in space. Nevada entrepreneur Dennis Hope has sold millions of acres of property on the Moon, Mars, and other planetary bodies, despite his dubious right to do so. Hope has been charging $19.99, plus shipping and handling, for an acre on the Moon, and $22.49 for an acre on Mars. So far, he claims to have sold 7% of the Moon. The law also gets thorny in another arena, space debris. According to the Outer Space Treaty, all space objects, including defunct satellites, belong to the country that launched them forever. But what if a company refuses to take responsibility for its own debris cleanup? Under current law, no other country has the right to try to salvage or dispose of dead satellites, even if they pose a collision risk to everyone else's spacecraft. All of this uncertainty means one thing. There might soon be a booming market for space lawyers. For Scientific American's Instant Egghead, I'm Clara Moskowitz.